Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the three steps to fund the lifestyle of your dreams. In this video, I want to discuss the three steps to fund the lifestyle of your dreams. And those steps are pretty much the steps that I found out from the book, The 4-Hour Workweek from Tim Ferriss. This book has actually sparked my interest to start the cycle of creating my perfect lifestyle to set up the dreams that I have and I'm building on right now. This book was one of the first books that I read in my, in my life, I think when I was around 18. It actually helped me imagine and accept that everyone can achieve their dreams, they can travel around the world, they can learn whatever they want to learn. I think Tim learned how to salsa in Buenos Aires and he went to Taekwondo if I'm not mistaken, in, in Japan in terms of championships and tried to do the things that actually sparked his interest and he went through the different steps and the principles that he followed in order to achieve those while building businesses and while quote unquote working four hours a week. And the whole idea behind it is that you can use automating tools, you can use predefined strategies on how to allocate your time in the most effective way possible. Let's go through the different steps and I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. The first step is to be effective, not efficient. Behind the first step is Tim's introduction to the Pareto's principle or the 80-20 rule, which pretty much states that if you spend 20% on the things that are, have the best outcome in your life, you're gonna achieve 80% of the results. So you can pretty much optimize the five working day week into pretty much one day if you only work on the things that actually benefit you the most, work on the 20% that actually gives out the 80% of the results. This is something that is still relevant because people are with the perception that you need to work long hours so you are more productive or the more hours that you work, the better the outcome may be. But we actually spend a lot of time overthinking stuff and not actually doing stuff because we know we have more time. And if we start measuring what works and what doesn't and coming back to to a video previously that I did, if you know yourself better and focus only on what you can do the best and what you're the best at in terms of where you fit into the whole structure of the company that you own or the company that you work with or you work in and you know yourself the best and then you focus only on your strengths, then the 80% of your work can actually come from the 20% of your time. This is something that I'm still trying to figure out for myself what is the best and to optimize on the things that actually have the biggest outcome at the end. To synthesize it is you need to focus only a few things and if you have the data to back it up, keep that in mind and let's go to the next. The second step is to always validate your ideas. I think I've mentioned that in a previous video. Maybe this is where it came from. Maybe it's from all my endeavors in the startup world and testing out different things, but the faster it is for you to go to market, to ask your clients, to ask your potential clients, to ask the market to validate your thought process, the better it is, the less time you're actually gonna spend on it. It's going to hurt, definitely. It's going to be painful for you to realize that the baby that you created is not the best, or maybe you need to change some stuff, but the market is the market. And you cannot be mad at the market just because you think that everything you do is the best. This is something personal that I have learned for myself. Life is not going to give you subtle feedback. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be hard for you to accept, but this is just life. You have to accept it. And the faster you accept it, the less emotional that you are, the less soaking and fighting how life works. And also, if you try to overcome those challenges, the more excited that you are, that you're willing to go and try to create something and validate it by the market. And then the faster the whole cycle of this is going to happen. I think the biggest lesson for this step based on the book is that first you need to always test and validate your business ideas. I think what Tim is trying to figure out from this point is if you are willing to ask for money, then you're going to hear the straight up answer. Just because you asked a person what they think about this thing that you created or you just showcase it or this is like this prototype idea that you have. So they're not truthful to 100%, at least that's how I feel. They're not truthful to what they think. But if you actually ask them for money, 
then the whole thing changes because they actually have to get their hard-earned money and pay you something for this that actually really solves their problem. I think it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's a mindset change. You have to be open to criticism. You have to be open to people giving you the honest feedback. But that's a learning lesson that I think is super viable for everyone in the world, especially if you're an entrepreneur or you want to become an entrepreneur and have this array of ideas that you're willing to test out in the world. So this is number two. The third step to fund the lifestyle of your dreams is to charge a premium to make your life easier. The thought process is pretty straightforward. It's something, again, it's still like a mind shift change that you need to happen and to occur in your in yourself. In order for you to provide the best quality that you have, you always need to charge a little bit higher than everybody else. And this is how your product can be differentiated from all the different people that are in your industry, in your niche. And it takes a certain amount of guts, it takes a certain amount of, of audacity to actually create and sell something that is a couple of times more expensive than everybody else's, but you're going to attract a different set of people. It might even be a more painful problem for that particular group of people because they're willing to spend more money on it and then the need for solving that problem might be higher. This is going to help you out in a tremendous way because first, you're going to delve with a different type of people. Second, the actual clients are even easier to negotiate and easier to communicate with. There are less hassles around it, there are less returns, and people are just trying to find the right solution for their specific problem, and they're willing to pay the price for it. There is a change that needs to happen in yourself for you to value yourself or to think that you can create something that is worth $5,000, $10,000, even more, depending on what you're creating, what your product is, and what the industry that you're in. From Tim's perspective, it takes roughly the same effort for you if you sell something that costs $10 or costs $1,000. So the steps are pretty much the same, but then you, you're you actually getting more profit, you're actually de de dealing with easier people to, to start with, and your life will be simplified. And this is Coming back first to the, to the first step, that 80-20 rule is once you start going into the business, once you start to identify all the steps and all the life goals that you have or the perfect lifestyle that you need and what is your dream lifestyle. Or for example, you're just working a couple of hours a day and you're going to the beach every day and you're living in that villa on just overseeing the ocean, everything like that. Maybe this is your life. Maybe there's it's something else but once that's defined you can always track and see the steps of where you need to start and like coming back to the point of the clients once you create a product once you start selling you can always identify what are the 20 percent of your efforts that are resulting to the 80 percent of, of the outcome that you're looking forward to actually achieving this is just the rough three steps that i found valuable this book has pretty much changed my life and opened my mind to the ideas of outsourcing and automating and traveling around the world and it creates so many different points across your life and your and your dream lifestyle that it just sparks that interest and i think that's why tim hasn't created a second version or updated version or that's why he's this is something that organically happened i guess that actually worked into the market in terms of sales in terms of brand recognition and everything that happened to him afterwards. Take it as it is. It might be a little bit salesy. It might be a little bit dreamy. It might be a little bit whatever the case may be. But this, at least in my life, has opened my perspective and my eyes to recognize that you can do so many different things. And there's this blueprint that this person actually has done this. Those have been the three steps to fund the lifestyle of your dreams. Hopefully this short video has been helpful to you. Thanks a lot everyone for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and comment down on all the things that you find are relevant towards the video. Let me know if you have learnings from the book. Let me know if you want to delve into specific topics. I'm going to be linking down the audiobook and the paperback book from Tim so you can purchase it and see for yourself all the different points that he shares in the different aspects of your life that you can change and optimize from the perspective of what a person can do and how he can live and create this perfect lifestyle for themselves. So thanks a lot everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one.